Good morning, and welcome to St. Olaf's online service. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. If you watched our Ash Wednesday service, you will have noticed that our church has taken on a much more somber Lenten appearance, including the dark purple Lenten veil hanging behind the altar and the use of the wooden candlesticks and cross instead of our usual brass ones. I'm very grateful this year to Don Weston, who has created a few more Lenten implements for our worship, including the alms basin, which you can see behind me propped up on the center of the altar, and also the missile stand, or the, the priest's book stand, which you can see on the, the far end of the altar. Again, normally these would be brass, and Don has created for us these lovely wooden versions um, that we can use throughout Lent, as well as the processional cross right behind me. There's an old English tradition of using a very simple, plain, red processional cross during Lent. And so Don has created this uh, processional cross for us to replace the normal brass one that we use throughout the rest of the year. All of these things help draw our attention to the more somber, stark tone uh, of Lent. And so um, thank you, Don, for your generosity and your uh, gift of your skills and talents. The Lenten study is fast approaching. Our first session will be next Wednesday, the 24th of February. We will begin at 7 p.m. with evening prayer, and uh, then our session will start approx approximately around 7.30 and go to about 8.30. The theme of the study, as I have mentioned in previous services, is angels and giants, and we will be looking at some of the more curious and mysterious uh, figures of the biblical story. I hope you can join me for that session. Uh, it will be on Zoom, and if you would like the link for the session, you can email me and I will send you the link, or you can also email our secretary, Judy Beal, and she can email you the link as well. Our vestry meeting is next Sunday, the 28th, starting at 12 noon. This will also be on Zoom. It's the usual coffee hour Zoom link, so if you already know how to join coffee hour, then you will be able to join our vestry meetings, exactly the same. If you have not yet done that and you want the information, please get in touch with Judy and she will send you the Zoom link for that meeting. Our service today is a service of Holy Communion and we begin by singing the litany found on page 30. Our gradual psalm is 91 verses nine to 16, found on page 448. Our processional hymn is, O oh, for a Closer Walk with God. But first, a word from our child and youth minister, Martha Riddle. You'll notice that the church is all decked out in purple because we have finally made it to Lent. Now, it definitely feels like Lent last year never ended, but once again, here we are. Lent is a penitential season. And if you need a refresher on what that means, I recommend once again checking out episode three of the Teach Us to Pray series, which you can find on this channel. Now, Lent is a solemn and serious time. The church invites us to observe Lent with three particular disciplines. And they are disciplines because they don't come naturally. They take a little bit of practice and a little bit of effort. That's prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Now, the one that we always talk the most about is fasting. Fasting is what sends, sets Lent apart from the rest of the year. Fasting means to go without food or to limit your food intake. An abstinence is a kind of fasting where we abstain, we avoid or go without certain kinds of food, especially treats, meat, sweets, that sort of thing. Now, when we're choosing what to give up for Lent, it shouldn't be something you don't actually like. So giving up steamed spinach and homework, you know, it's really not much of a sacrifice. You don't want to be too easy on yourself, but you also don't want to be too hard. The purpose of Lent is not to make us miserable. It's to help us remember that everything in our life comes from God. And we can give up just a little bit for only 40 days for the one who gave up his life for us on the cross. It's a small way of saying thank you and a small way of remembering the sacrifice of Jesus. Our suffering, no matter how small, 
unites us to the suffering of Jesus and to the suffering of our fellow human beings around the world. Lent is really a time that makes us more mindful of the needs of others. In order to help you focus your Lenten discipline, I've created something for you to fill out. You can write down what you're going to do this Lent, what you're going to give up, and what you want to take on. Put it somewhere where you can see it every day. It's going to remind you that everything we are doing this Lent is made possible only through God's grace, and we do it for God's glory. Thanks be to God, and have a blessed Lent. Brothers and sisters, in the primitive church, it was the custom to observe with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and to prepare for the same by a season of penitence and fasting. The season of Lent provided also a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when such persons as had, by reason of notorious sins, been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled and restored to the fellowship of the church by penitence and forgiveness. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution contained in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need, which all Christians continually have, of a renewal of their repentance and faith. I therefore invite you, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditation upon God's holy word. O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God the Son, 
Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God the Holy Ghost, Sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O God the Holy Ghost, Sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons and one God, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons and one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and mischief, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from thy wrath and from everlasting condemnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and all uncharitableness. Good Lord, deliver us. From all uncleanness in thought, word, and deed, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, from battle and murder, and from sudden death. Good Lord, Deliver us from all sedition, conspiracy, and rebellion, from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial. Good Lord, deliver us. By thy glorious resurrection and ascension, by thy sending of the Holy Spirit, by thy heavenly intercession, and by thy coming again in glory. Good Lord, deliver us. In all times of tribulation, in all times of prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee, good Lord, to keep and strengthen in true worshipping of thee, in holiness of life, and in devotion to her people, Thy servant Elizabeth, our most gracious Queen and Governor, we beseech thee, good Lord, to be her defender and keeper, giving her the victory over all her enemies. We beseech thee, good Lord, to bless and preserve Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, the Prince of Wales, and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, Prince William and Catherine, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, and all the royal family. We beseech thee, good Lord, to give to all bishops, priests, and deacons true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee, good Lord, to send forth laborers into thy harvest, to prosper their work by thy Holy Spirit, to make thy saving health known unto all nations, and to hasten thy kingdom. We beseech thee, good Lord, to bless the people of our country and the commonwealth, and to endue those set in authority with grace, wisdom, and understanding. We beseech thee, good Lord, to bless and guide the judges and magistrates, giving them grace to execute justice and to maintain truth. We beseech thee, good Lord, to bless and keep the Queen's forces by sea and land and air, and to shield them in all dangers and adversities. We beseech thee, 
good Lord. To give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, that they may serve thee without fear. We beseech thee, good Lord. To bless and protect all who serve mankind by their labor and learning. We beseech thee, good Lord. To preserve all the travel, all women laboring of child, all sick persons and young children, and to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives. We beseech thee, good Lord. To defend and provide for all widows and orphans, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee, good Lord. To bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee, good Lord. To give to all thy people increase of grace, to hear meekly thy word, and to receive it with pure affection, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. We beseech thee, good Lord. To bring into the way of truth all who have heard and are deceived. We beseech thee, good Lord. To strengthen such as do stand, to encourage the faint-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee, good Lord. To succor, help, and comfort all that are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee, good Lord. To have mercy upon all men. We beseech thee, good Lord. To give and preserve to our use the kindly fruits of the earth, so that in due time we may enjoy them. We beseech thee, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee, good Lord. To give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence, that our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness. To thy honor and glory, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter of the second epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in, the, in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succoured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, in imprisonment, in turmoils, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love and faith, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of the righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. Here ends the epistle. Because thou hast said, the Lord is my refuge, and hast made the Most High thy habitation, there shall no evil happen unto thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, that thou hurt not thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under thy feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Yea, I am with him in trouble. I will deliver him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lord, be thy heart and all thy lips, that thou mayest worthily proclaim this holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness, to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, 
and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. After I had grown up and moved out of my parents' home, my mother and stepfather retired to a place outside the city. Their house sits 10 kilometers outside the nearest town even. It's a place one could reasonably call the wilderness. And the first time I went to stay with them, I remember really looking forward to leaving behind the hustle and bustle of the city and finally enjoying some real silence. Well, it took precisely one night there to disabuse me of that notion. More precisely, it took one 3 a.m. wake-up call by the birds. And I'm not talking about three or four birds gently chirping. No, I'm talking about hundreds of birds screaming at the tops of their voices 
greeting a dawn, which was, I might add, still a couple of hours away. In short, it was loud. The wilderness, as it turns out, is pretty loud. This is true both of the physical wilderness and of the spiritual wilderness that we're all venturing into right now in the season of Lent. Now, this is not to discourage you, but if you were expecting to journey into the wilderness and find a serene quiet waiting for you there, you may wish to adjust your expectations. Many people, of course, have ventured into deserted regions before us, literally in some cases, in pursuit of a closer relationship with God. Some have even left written accounts of their experiences. Syncletica of Alexandria, for example, the fourth century desert mother is among them. In her case, she left the busy world of the city and took up residence in an abandoned tomb. And in one of her sayings that's come down to us, she tells us what she learned there. We must arm ourselves, she says, in every way against the demons, for they attack us from outside and they also stir us up from within. And the soul is then like a ship when great waves break over it. And at the same time, it sinks because the hold is too full. We are just like that. We lose as much by the exterior faults we commit as by the thoughts inside us. Now, it would be fair for you to say that I don't need to reach back 1,600 years to tell you that a stilling of the external storms doesn't necessarily make for a quiet journey. It's been nearly a year since we went into our first lockdown, in the middle of Lent, if you can believe it. Many of us will know all too well by this point that having the external distractions stripped away doesn't necessarily lead to silence. Sometimes it only makes it easier for us to hear our internal disturbances, our inner demons, if you will. Sometimes these seem to shout even louder than the world, so that a life without the busyness of endless tasks and diversions ends up being even less restful. And yet, this is precisely the state we seek out every year in Lent. Even though many of us have had a kind of paring down of our activities thrust upon us, this is different. Now we're doing it intentionally. We're venturing into the desert with the goal of turning inward. And we're not going in order to find rest, but to face the challenges we're all too prone to ignore because most of the time we're focused on the wave that's washing over us and then the next one and then the next until it sometimes seems like there's never time to go down into the hold and look at what it is that's weighing us down. But now is the time to turn our attention inward. So we fast and we give things up. We cut back on how much we serve the demands of our bodily desires so that we can have the opportunity to attend more closely to the temptations that draw us away from God. Maybe, just maybe, if we look closely enough, at the very heart of all those desires is a yearning not for sumptuous food or entertainment, but for the vitality and joy of knowing him. This is, of course, not only the work of Lent. This is the whole Christian life. It's put in a particular focus in this season, but it's this work that we took on when we were baptized. And so we begin this season immediately following Jesus' own baptism at the beginning of his earthly ministry, when he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. And like all who would later follow his example, he went not to bask in the stillness of an untroubled soul, but to face head on the temptations that would await us. In our Lord's temptation by the devil in the wilderness, we see these worldly desires stripped of their seductive veneer, one by one, and answered one by one. 
Bread won't keep us alive forever. Possessions can't give eternal safety. Only the word of God does that. Nothing we can do in this world will give us the kind of unshakable knowledge we crave. But we can learn to trust God with a trust that demands no tests. So we're learning not to worship the things of the world. We're learning not to make them the goal of what we do so that we won't miss the thing our souls are really crying out for. Eternal safety, abundant life, and the trust we need to know that God has given them to us already. He has invited us to share in the eternal and abundant life of his son. We're learning to affirm that life in us by answering every clamoring hunger with the words the Son of God offered on our behalf that day in the desert. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. When we pray, we don't measure the success of our prayers by whether or not God has given us the things we ask for. We measure it by whether he has changed the things we want. Whether we've grown from desiring material things to wanting to be closer to him. Or whether we've moved from craving control to longing to trust him more deeply. Whether we've ceased to worship the things of the world and set our sights on eternity. As we remain in this desert place throughout the next six weeks, may we come to see more and more how our Lord is the fulfillment of all that we truly desire. In answer to our hunger, he is the bread of life. In answer to our fears, he is God among us. May we come to trust that we live not as citizens of the world, but of an eternal kingdom, because we live in him. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. In our prayers this morning, I bid you to pray for the church throughout the world, for the persecuted church, for the church in the developing world, and the church here at home. In particular, we are asked to pray today for the province of Central Africa, and within our own diocese, for the Durham and Northumberland deanery. And let us pray for the work of the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. Let us pray for our own parish, for our clergy and staff, for our upcoming annual vestry meeting on the 28th of February. Let us pray for our South Sudanese brothers and sisters, for Kathy Langston's Hosanna Children's Mission to Romania, the Second Century Mission Fund, and for Hunger Patrol. Let us pray for the nations of the world that peace may be known throughout the world. Let us pray for the sick, for Anne, Doris, Scott, Felicia, Diana, Ruth, Ryan and family, Lori and Bill, David, Tim, Roger, Annie and Joyce. And let us pray for those in other forms of need, for all prisoners and captives, for the grieving, the suffering, the unemployed, those in any form of anxiety or distress, especially Fiorella, Josephine, Maya, Susan, Deb, Donna, Allison. And let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest, especially Helen Weston, Sally Jarvis Sloan, Grant Milligan Sr., Gwendolyn Jones, Arnold Chan, Valerie Ma, Charlotte Boyd O'Donoghue, and on his year's mind, George Fennell. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise with Christ in glory. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue, Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Andrew and thy servant Jenny, our bishops, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, and we bless thy holy name 
for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that, rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father, Father of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, 
For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come, come to, to this thy, thy table, O merciful, merciful Lord, trusting, trusting in our, our own righteousness, righteousness but, but in thy manifold and great mercies. mercies. We, are we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under, under thy table, table. But, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace.
Let us pray. Our Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.